badger. Oh, are you having fun? Which bit are you up to? Chapter six, of course. Do you think we should get on reading chapter six? Hello again? Yes. Okay. Pass it over to me. Thank you very much. Now, shall we find out the clue for chapter six in the red bag? Oh, here we have chapter six. Here we are. Chapter six. Okay. And in the red bag. There we are. Right, are you ready, Mr. Gomot? Beautiful unicorn. I love unicorns. This is a beautiful unicorn. Here we are. Right. Oh, I can't wait to find out about the unicorn badger. Here we go. When Hamish opened his eyes, he was high in the blue sky aboard the Wim Wim. As they climbed higher and higher, houses became dots and dots became specks until it was all a bit of a blur. Still hanging on, Hamish, shouted Badger over the whiz and whistle of the wind. Just about, where are we? Nearly there. But where is? Nearly there. You'll find out soon enough. We're going to visit my grumpy friend, Nippy Nimbus. He's the gatekeeper to nearly there. I've just got to make sure the Wim Wim lands on the right spot. He's usually hanging around at about 20 past the Southern Fog Bow. The Southern what? asked Hamish. Suddenly, the Wim Wim shot upwards as Badger caught sight of Nippy Nimbus, a big, fluffy, white cloud. Don't be fooled by his fluffiness, warned Badger. He's usually in a very bad mood and finds everything, including us, ridiculous. As the Wim Wim landed clumsily in the misty swirl, an irritated voice shouted, Hey! Get off of my cloud! Oh no! said Badger, scratching his head with his paw. I've forgotten the password! What do you mean? asked Hamish. And where are we anyway? Welcome to Nippy Nimbus, the grumpiest cloud in the world, sighed Badger. Nippy Nimbus bellowed. I might have known it was you, Badger, the full of nonsense, mystical mutt. Can't remember your password, eh? Oh dear, no entry for you today. Go away. Goodbye. Badger climbed down the Wim Wim's ladder and frowned. His eyebrows twitched. Ah, he smiled. Got it, actually, he replied smugly to his bad-tempered friend. Try... Cloud number nine! Badger shimmied his bottom and crossed his paws in a little dance as he bounced around the fluffiness, feeling very pleased with himself. Wrong! Nopty cackled Nippy Nimbus. Oh! exclaimed Badger, not quite sure what to do next. Hamish clambered out of the Wim Wim to join Badger. Okay, I lied, admitted Nippy huffily, a 
parting suddenly appeared within the depths of the white mist. Come ahead then, said Nippy, but don't expect it to be the same password next time. I'll catch you out yet. Come on, Hamish, let's crank up the Wim Wim. Nippy's letting us through. Badger climbed back into the Wim Wim, followed hastily by Hamish, then grasped the golden key with his paws and pushed it until it started to whir on its own. The whim whim creaked and clattered and panted and puttered before shooting through the gap in the mist at an alarming speed. When the whim whim landed, Hamish was thrown on top of Badger who was feeling a bit dazed after the speedy descent. Hamish rubbed his eyes in bewilderment. They were in a luscious green forest. Birds sang, water trickled and the air smelled zingly fresh. The branches of the trees bent and bowed to welcome them and plants shot up to say, Hello! Amazing! shrieked Hamish. They set off on the golden leaved path in front of them. As Hamish looked at the wise old trees and the shimmer of sunlight upon their leaves, he asked, Is this an enchanted forest badger? Before Badger could answer, they heard a rustle nearby. Shh, whispered Badger. I think baby unicorn is coming out to play. Baby who? Out of the trees, a pure white creature appeared with a glowing spiral horn on its forehead. Its eyes were deep pools of kindness and its mane was long, flowing and silky. That's a funny looking horse. Why has it got a horn in the middle of its head? asked Hamish. That's not just any horse, Hamish. It's a unicorn. And that horn is magical. It can purify the darkest poison, protect from harm, heal a broken heart, and help people to see things clearly. Wow! Do you think it could clean us up too? whispered Hamish, who was still a bit whiffy from earlier. The unicorn's horn started to sparkle. Let's see, replied Badger. Baby Unicorn walked towards them, stopped at their feet and bowed its horn at them both. Hamish followed Badger's lead and bowed back. Yuck, said Baby Unicorn. You smell! Sorry about that, said Badger, blushing. We had an unfortunate encounter with some grime and slime. Okay, stand back both of you. From Baby Unicorn's horn, a blast of hot soapy bubbles shot forth and covered Hamish and Badger from head to toe. They shook themselves and looked at each other. Every trace of the blue paint, the snail's trails and slime and goo and gunge had gone. Well, that's certainly better than my paint removing spell, said Badger in admiration. All part of the job, said the unicorn. What happens now? whispered the now squeaky clean and perfectly groomed Hamish. We follow, winked Badger. The unicorn turned and headed off down the golden leaved path. They followed for what seemed like a long time until a shaft of light appeared 
to a clearing. Baby Unicorn turned towards the light with Badger and Hamish close behind. Everything was hushed but for the twigs and the bracken snapping and crackling beneath their feet. They passed a signpost pointing ahead. On it, in big lettering, it said, Nearly there! Badger looked back at Hamish and said, Remember when you asked me earlier where nearly there was? Well, there's the signpost, so we're very close. But we've been walking for ages, moaned Hamish. To quote a well-known saying, Hamish, said Badger wisely, you never can tell how close you are. It may be near, though it seems so far. Come on, we truly are nearly there, which means the next bit is there. Okay, but there seems an awfully long way from here. Patience now, Hamish, we're so close. A big old tree leaned over Hamish's path. Its branches pointed ahead, guiding him onwards. As the branches swayed, Hamish was sure he could hear the tree whisper. Nearly there. Nearly there. They walked on until Badger spotted another sign with even larger letters spelling out the word there. There it is. We've found there. Oh, there at last, sighed Hamish, hearing his tummy rumble and hoping the Badger was right about dinner time standing still. They passed through an archway of trees and spied the mouth of a cave set in a cliff of clear quartz crystal. The entrance dazzled, twinkled and glimmered with a brilliant light. A sign outside read, Thank you for coming here to there which is now, of course, here. We hope you enjoy your visit. Come back soon and don't forget to tell all of your friends here, there and everywhere. So, here we are at there, which is also here without the tea, said Badger, looking at Hamish knowingly. No tea! Is that the same as dinner? asked Hamish with a worried look. Don't worry Hamish, it's not that kind of tea. Dinner time will still be there when we get back. Brilliant, replied Hamish in wide-eyed wonder, wondering what could possibly be inside the cave. They walked towards the opening. The unicorn motioned for them to follow. Amazing! shouted Hamish as he weaved his way through different coloured crystal stalagmites and stalactites. His voice and the word amazing bounced back at him as it echoed around the walls of the cave. Wow! shrieked Hamish. Wow, wow, wow! replied the echo. Wow, there's lots of Hamishes in here, said Hamish, a bit befuddled. Shh, whispered Badger. As they walked on, he glanced over his shoulder but could not resist throwing a final word to the cave. Dinner! Dinner, 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 replied the echo. Hamish smiled to himself and followed Badger and baby unicorn who had been waiting patiently for him to finish his fun. And that is the end of chapter six where they all go into the crystal cave. That's so exciting. Well, thank you very much, Badger. You're going to continue reading. Oh, well, enjoy. And I'll leave you 
with your toast. See you soon.